can you tell me something about your lighthouse what was the inspiration behind lighthouse and what is lighthouse all about lighthouse firstly the name lighthouse itself speaks what it is it's a place where which is dedicated for uh, each person to become a light unto himself like how the buddha had said that be your own light so that is the purpose of lighthouse uh, it is basically to teach a kind of uh, meditation which i teach which in which you do nothing absolutely nothing it is total wrong doing and uh, then it is there is a, a, a bouquet of uh, different services. Uh, for example, good morning. For example, good morning. Uh, for example, we are uh, having uh, some specialists who take care of uh, good deep body massages, body opening, uh, steam, uh, anima, and etc. etc mud packs and other things. That's one section which is the treatment section. The other section is uh, physical yoga for opening up the body. And uh, then there are classes by you, Alankrita, <laughs> the one who is asking me questions. Uh, Alankrita ji has taught meditation for about 20 years. So uh, she is going to teach some different techniques. And then finally, my class, which is going to be like, um, it goes from like one and a half hour to three hours, it depends. Mm -hmm. So that's the service which we give. Then as far as uh, staying is concerned, we have like uh, uh, 12 people can stay. A group of 12 people can stay. 10 can stay or 12 can stay. And uh, the whole building is dedicated only to yoga, meditation or other. Healthcare. Okay, one thing I want to ask you, like, you know, I've been, as you said, that this place is meant for meditation, and you know, the whole world is talking about meditation. The West is just going gaga over this word. Can you just explain what exactly is meditation? Because people don't understand it. Meditation. Meditation is a... <laughs> Yeah, it has, it's like these days a very, rather a, even a, an abused word, you know. People are using it everywhere. Uh, actually, the word meditation in English, it means to think carefully. You know, meditate means to, to meditate on something is to think carefully about that thing, right? And meditate also is connected to the meaning to measure, right? That is the the Oxford Dictionary the meaning given in the Oxford. Meditation normally what people think is close your eyes and sit quietly for some time and pay attention. And that is also maybe a beginner's form of meditation. But to me meditation means that your the thinking process Okay, has come to a standstill. It has stopped. That means you are not thinking anything about the past, anything about the future, or anything about now. And when your thinking process folds up, when your mind has become totally silent, your conscious mind is quiet, okay, at that very moment, the cosmic light or energy enters your being and starts doing uh, an operation within your body and mind uh, and that's a very complex process that takes place but the energy basically heals you uh, and uh, all the wrong connections that the brain has in the body it severes that it's a very long process that happens over a period of many years so that operation of that energy in the silent mind 
that and when it operates, it releases tension, it releases anger, it releases fear. That release is meditation. When that release is taking place inside, psychological release, you feel light. You know, mm. that is meditation. Mm -hmm. So that means anybody can just get into it. It, doesn't, it does not require any uh, preparation. Pre pre no, not necessary. Mm. Only that person must be fit mm. and he must be very eager to do, you know, to mm. do this. If he has resistance, then obviously he will not let go and it will not happen. Mm. But if he's really ready to like put himself, you know, surrender, mm. then it will happen. And mm -hmm. I have done it with small babies. I did it with a five-year-old boy, six-year-old boy, say five, six-year-old boy. He was, there was a worker here. You, you have seen, mm -hmm. th there was this uh, one very naughty boy and his sister. Mm -hmm. And we were playing and we were sitting on the ground and I, you know, put them on this meditation and opened their mouth and all. After, when he, firstly, when I was trying to ask them to get up, they were saying, no, we want to do more, we want to do more. Okay. And then when he got up and he sat, he looked around and he know what he told me. He said, uncle, aapko pata hai? I said, what? And I could see his face was so bright and beautiful. He says, mere andar na. <laughs> so I said, wow, and that is what real meditation does. It, it strikes your fear first and ends your fear. So mm. meditation begins, the beginning of meditation is the ending of fear, mm. psychological fear. Right. So is it the same as awareness? Obviously, then you will know what awareness is. Mm. You see, once energy is operating in you, then you will know what awareness is, mm. not before. Mm -hmm. See, one thing I am very interested in knowing from you is, like, since you have also done this lighthouse and uh, the main idea is also to make people healthy, you know, healing is an intrinsic part of it. So can you just define what is health? What do you mean by, is it, uh, does it mean having a good physique or a good body or what exactly do you mean by health? See, all these words, if you look up in the dictionary and you see their meaning, no, you will get a proper understanding. Health comes from the word whole. Whole mm -hmm. means one, whole, not divided, but something which is whole. So, a man who is whole, okay, is a man who is healthy. And who is whole? A person whose psyche, whose mind, whose psyche is not divided between you, me, I, I and mine, they and theirs. This division which we have, you know, uh, we belong to certain groups, we call ourselves, I'm Indian, I'm Hindu, uh, all this. So, somebody who, who has, who sees the whole universe as, you know, uh, a, a total one thing, not divided, not my house, your house, my place, your place. This division is only created by thinking. Actually, in space, like you are standing there, you are taking my interview, I am talking to you, right? We are not divided, you know. Without you, my questions are not there. Without the questioner, the answer is not there. So we are all interrelated and all interdependent. So anybody, most scientists, most people know this fact that we are all interdependent. But when you come to actual brass tacks and you ask them, then he'll say, I am a Christian, I am a Hindu, I am a Muslim. So this division which we have made, you know, we have divided life into Hindu, Christian, this is absolutely wrong and where there is a division, there will be a conflict. You see? So therefore, all of us are living a life of conflict. Conflict inside and conflict outside. So therefore, the meaning of the word whole means a mind which is freed from conflict. It is not in conflict with anybody. Neither with itself nor with others. Such a mind is whole and then after it becomes whole, the old wounds, it takes time to heal. You know, it's not instantly everything gets healed. 
but uh, the process starts. Hmm. Very interesting. And it starts with that meditative state, which is awareness. Hmm. It you can also become aware yourself hmm. if you understand attention and if you really pay total attention once in your life. When you pay total attention, what will happen is your mind will stop. Hmm. And after it stops and goes into silence, it can start again. Hmm. Okay. But now, the energy will operate your mind. Mm. So therefore, there will be no center to operate, no me or mine which is operating, but the, the cosmic energy which is operating the mind. So what will happen, just like how you eat your food and your food gets digested automatically, mm. even your thinking, like my thinking, it's mm. automatic. I don't think, it's just coming out. It is spontaneous. Spontaneous, if you want to use the word, it's okay. Mm. Mm. But it's just coming out. Yeah, it's just happening. <laughs> yeah. Spontaneous is also <laughs> a very... I have uh, often heard from you that you, you know, explain meditation with the help of mathematics. You always talk about a point. <laughs> For the last, I mean, 13, 14 years, I have heard a lot about the point. Can you just elaborate? I mean, we always say that, you know, let's come to the point. Let's discuss the point. So what exactly is this point and, you know, how is it... I mean, how, what is the correlation between mathematics and uh, meditation, if you can explain it? See, the human mind, when I am talking to you, are listening, what we are using, we are using a language. Hmm. Right? Now, language is based on alphabets. Okay? Alphabets are basically <coughs> written drawn and written like A is written, there is one line like this, one line like this and one A, right? So you, it comes from line, making lines, okay? Yes. Making some figures, hmm. right? And the line starts from the point. So all knowledge, if you take all knowledge, I'm talking about science, history, everything, whatever, Vedas, everything, okay? And reduce them from where, from where you start that knowledge, it is a point. The point is the starting point. If you don't have a point, you can't make a line. You can't make a line, you can't write a language, you can't write numbers, you can't write anything. Right? So if you see the uh, book of geometry, which is, uh, I studied in the fifth standard, Euclid's geometry. So when you open the book, the first chapter is, what is a point? So, uh, it says, what is a point? And it defines, it, the definition is, a point is that in which there is neither length, nor width, nor breadth. Bindu wo hai, jiski na lambai hai, na chadai hai, na gehrai hai. So, what my teacher did was, she picked up a chalk, and there was this blackboard, and she did tuck like this, made a point. So I put my hand up. I said, ma'am, I have a question. So she said, what? I said, the book is saying that it has point is that which has no length, no width, no breadth. And you have made a point. I can see it. So if I can see it, it has some dimension. It has some length, width, and width. So you are not making the point. So you please tell me either you are telling a lie or the book is telling a lie. She got shocked. She had, not, she had not thought of it. Then she confessed. She says, Son, I'm teaching you what people have taught me. I'm teaching you. Don't ask me this question. I don't know. <laughs> so I said, Then why are you teaching this? It says, Point has no dimension and you are making the point. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is, the, If the point has neither length, width or breadth, it cannot be in space or time. See, anything to be in space and time must have some dimension. Okay? So, this understanding of this point, this point, to me, this point is what you are, what I am, what each of us is. It is a point of light. Okay? It has no dimension. Okay? And once 
your mind stops in as you as they say no a still mind when the mind has become quiet and still you are in you are that point and those who do not realize this point okay are always trying to make a point in their life throughout their life see whenever i am talking whenever you are asking me questions you know what we are doing we are trying to make a point sir uh, i don't understand what you are saying I, you know, what is the point you are making <laughs> we ask this question you see so we are always trying to make a point but can you make a point you know we can point towards something we can't make a point because that point you are i am you know which means you and me are nothing because we have no dimension point has neither length nor width nor breadth okay it has no dimension and if you see the uh, symbol of om okay on top there is a moon and on top of it there is a point okay so therefore our ancient people they knew about this point okay and anybody who realizes the truth knows this point and when you sit in meditation you see that point it's sometimes golden in color sometimes blue in color okay you have also seen that point so uh, the whole point is to realize the point yeah and if you don't realize the point after the point whatever you are doing like making a line making languages it is all imagination all even mathematics science everything is based on imagination for example the number 1 okay now there is zero and there is one okay now i want to ask the mathematician what is there between zero and one how did you come to one you know you we are just saying this is one you know i am saying this is not one with this my hand is there with this hand my body is there with this body this chair is there with this chair this space is there with this space the universe is there everything is one how come this is one yeah <laughs> you know so therefore even mathematics is little nice all knowledge basically is false okay why it is false because it is imaginary and what is meditation meditation is the end of knowledge ved anta ved anta means veda means knowledge anta means end ved an end of knowledge what knowledge not technical knowledge technical knowledge we need so that doesn't end okay i need a language to speak to you i need mathematics but me and mine for example when i used to be an actor i used to also always think you know about my profession my life this that self centered thinking now for the last 20 25 years i just don't even remember i was an actor you know not that i can't act i can but there is no self centered thinking there is no center in this body the center has gone beyond space and time actually my center is beyond space and time it is the source of the universe that source of the universe is your source my source the source of an ant the source of a plant the source of everything that from that point the whole universe hangs like a bubble okay mm. very interesting <laughs> now <laughs> you know you were just talking about acting so acting or art you have been an artist for a very very long time and people have known you as an artist as a good artist can you just explain what exactly is art and how can one become a good artist or what is the definition of artist definition of or art. yeah i mean of art rather of art you know so what you will do if i define art x y what will happen to you what is it? why do you need a definition of artist no but what do you mean by art i mean art is all that we do art, in the name of dance i art, i didn't make the word no. art uh -huh. okay again you must see the dictionary uh. art means order mm. o r d e r order mm. so everything is in perfect order mm. it's art for example show this this tree this 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 plant here mm. okay this is art okay mm. because everything is in harmony in order mm. okay this is also art this is also art right so nature whatever is there in nature 
It is all so beautiful. Uh, just go to any part of nature, any part of nature where man has not uh, spoiled nature, cut trees, okay? You will only see beauty everywhere. I remember when I was shooting Adi Shankaracharya, okay? So, uh, I was, uh, there was one scene, we were, I'm talking about 1980, 80 or 80, uh, 80. okay? We had come to Rishikesh, and from Rishikesh, we went little up, and on the Ganges, we saw one patch of uh, uh, sand, by the side of the river Ganga, there was the sand. It was so beautiful, you know. We was we just when we saw that, no, we were like, <laughs> okay. And what was that? It was almost white and a grey patch of uh, uh, this thing sand. And the the air had made waves on the sand. And it was almost about more than half a kilometer. And everything, all the waves were absolutely, all the lines were intact. Like, I think even the, a bird had not walked on it. It was like virgin. So we was like, wow. So G.V. Ayer uh, made a very good shot. He said, okay, you walk from here, you know. I was like, uh, just in a kopina. I was playing Shankaracharya. Just walk like this and go to the river. And what the shot he took is me walking on that river with that orange lion cloth. And then he just took the footprints on the sand. You know? And because it was so, so virgin and so unique, the footprints look so amazing. And then finally I reached the river. And it's an, one of the amazing shots in, in that film. Okay. So you have, you've got to have an eye to see art. Art is everywhere. Okay. In my house, somebody has got stones from the Ganges. Each piece of stone is an art. Okay. And the beauty is that the artist, we say God is the artist. I say the artist and the art are one. The painter and the painting is one. Like in the stone, the, the maker of the stone and the beauty of the stone is So in other words, the painter is painting in nature. It's he's painting whatever he's painting—a rock or a, making a beautiful flower or you know the sand beaches or whatever. He's making it there. The energy is making it from within. It's a meditation. So this meditation, what we talk, I talk about this awareness. This whole nature is in meditation. You know, everything is in meditation. The, every, you know. Meditation means to touch the source of life. Okay? And everything is, everything has life. Even stone has life. You see, this sunlight which is falling in me, this, this sunlight is the major source of life in this earth. You know? And we, we never thank the sun or pray to the sun. But uh, we owe our life to the sun. <laughs> So but art is... Uh, your art has taken you towards divinity. There are many people who don't realize it, you know. I mean, uh, in spite of being artists, they get into all kinds of habits. And over a period of time, when they lose that uh, sheen and when they are not into the glamour world anymore, you know, when they are not famous anymore, they tend to become frustrated and they don't know what to do with their lives. So sometimes we see that art... Uh, has two dimensions. Like one, as you said, it takes one to the divine and one, uh, it makes a person very crass also. You know, so your art has taken you towards divinity. Can you share a little more about it? I mean, this journey from an artist to what you are today. See, any work that we do, any work, First, uh, what is important is what is why you are doing that work. That is the first question. Why you are doing that work? For example, what, 
if you are doing, you can do some work, sometimes you can do some work, which just helps you to make money. Okay. Of course, all work involves some kind of earning, some kind of money. All work it does involve. But the point is, what happens with most of the people is, their focus is on money. For example, take anything like you know somebody is making uh, any craft or any art or anything so suppose I, I make this tray okay I have painted this tray okay now I painted it sitting in my house and you know putting my heart in mind I painted it and I enjoyed painting it okay then I have put it for sale and I say Sir, this is 100 rupees. Okay, because the material cost me 50 rupees and I took 2-3 days to paint this. So I am putting 50 rupees, my cost 100 rupees. I sell it. Now this I call a work of love. But if I don't have anything to do with this, I don't have anything to do with it, I can call one artist, I call one this thing and print 500 like this and sell it in the market. That is called loss. Okay. So, you must be very clear. You can do commercial work also. There is no problem. Okay. But your intention should be very clear. One. Two. Now, suppose I, I become an artist. Okay. Artist means living a life in art. Now, Especially like for an actor, if you take the case of an actor, the instrument of an actor, a painter has a brush and a, you know, a board and a colors and all that. The, for an actor, everything he ha has is this body, his brain and his five senses. It is, this is his instrument, right? Now, I, I want to become an, I am I'm, I'm I'm like training to become an actor. So, if I see 10 people, if I, this is, the, well, the answer is a little long in this, right? Uh, if I become uh, an artist and if I see 10 people acting this, that, and, you know, take a little of this man or take a little of this man, which most actors do, you know, they take a little from Rajesh Khanna, take a little from Devan and take from Dilip Kumar, this, that, and make one concoction and make it their style. Now, the first thing about an artist is, if I want to become an artist, I would never, 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 never do this. Never do, never, means never copy. First thing, okay? First thing about art, don't copy what others have done. See it, study it, and put it aside. Okay? Now, most people, what they do is, they don't have the patience to grow their own thing, Okay, so they just copy that and they they try to paste it. If you do that, are you an artist? No, you are like you know uh, a mime artist who has who has captured many styles and you know put it together. Maybe you might become Ashatruvan Sena. Maybe you might become, but they were not artists. I don't think they were artists. You know, and uh, it's very very difficult to be a real artist. Real artist. You know, you have to really burn your candles from both ends. Not one and both. One. Two, you have to be firstly a, a honest human being. Right? Because what is needed in art, you know, is that how true is your art? The sense of truth in art is what makes art great. Right? For example, when you see a Mona Lisa, you sometimes, like, if you see that, you sometimes think, is this a painting or is it that woman itself? Right? Or, you know, like people when they say Krishna, you know, they, they don't know if this man is acting or it's Krishna himself. Okay? So,
So, the sense of truth, not only in your art, but in your real life. Now, the one major thing which I am going to say, it's which most, most artists never think of it or never understand this thing, is you can never be a greater artist than the human being you are. आप जिस किस्म के इंसान हो आप उससे अच्छे कलाकार नहीं बन सकते तो आप यदि सुबह से लेकर शाम तक झूठ बोलते हो सुबह से लेकर शाम तक आप गंदी गंदी बातें करते हो सुबह से लेकर शाम तक आप सबको क्रिटिसाइज करते हो सबसे लड़ते हो और आप बोलो कि मैं दिलीप कुमार बन जाऊँ आप नहीं बन पाऊँ इज नॉट पॉसिबल यू सी सो दे इन आर्ट even in science it applies in everything even in business if you want to be a great businessman you have to be a great man mr jrd tata was a great man okay and all these people who have done great things in in their life they have you know they were if not wholly great at least partially in their work they were great right so to and this word great used to fascinate me from a, from my childhood there were two words which fascinated me one intelligence i was always thinking who is a really intelligent man who is a really intelligent man and everybody thought my father was intelligent but i cut him to pieces you know and he was as intelligent as the last book which he had read you know so he was not intelligent and i really i didn't meet an intelligent man in my life frankly i met some people who were quite intelligent but not really intelligent intelligent means you you are clear about everything in life you know and not only clear speaking but actually are living it that is a intelligent you know you people call that enlightenment but you don't have to call that enlightenment be intelligent intelligent means use your entire brain for everything you know think for yourself that is intelligence the heart of intelligence is to think for yourself what mr x said or what mr y said or what the bhagavad gita said and what krishna said all of them go to hell okay i am thinking and i am going to find out what is the real thing that that is intelligence to that needs a lot of hard work right uh, coming back to art you cannot be greater a greater artist than the human being you are some cases you might find oh he was he used to drink or he used to do that by the way drinking and sex doesn't make a man bad sex is a natural activity and drinking is just energy sharab ke upar maine char line likhi hai aapko sunata hu itihas bolna chahiye शराब तो शराब है शराब तो शराब है न अच्छी है न खराब है खराब ने शराब को पीकर शराब को खराब बना दिया आपके समझ में आई बात खराब जो इंसान खराब आपके समझ में आई अलग भी क्या समझ में आई इंसान खराब है शराब खराब नहीं है गालिब एक जगह में देख रहा था गालिब की वो सीरियल तो उसकी वाइफ को उसने बोला वो कुछ प्रॉब्लम हो गया था उसने बोला भाई थोड़ी शराब पिला दे तो वाइफ ने अरे फिर आप शराब शराब तो गालिब ने अपनी वाइफ को देख के बोला अरे आगे मुझे जाना ये तो बता दे कि शराब में खराबी क्या है <laughs> शराब तो एनर्जी है खराब कहा है दारू और दवा एक ही चीज है यदि आप उसको तरीके से पियो आप यदि जंगली हो और आप उसको पूरी दस बीस लीटर पी जाओ आप पचास रोटी खा जाओ आप सौ रसगुल्ले खा जाओ तो आप मर जाओ तो रसगुल्ला नहीं खराब है ना रोटी खराब है और ना शराब खराब शराब फल के जूस का एक माइन है उसको आप तरीके से पियो तो आपको अच्छी नींद भी आएगी आपका हार्ट भी ठीक रहेगा आप बड़े रिलैक्स रहोगे बड़ी अच्छी चीज़ है लेकिन वो इंसान को पीना पीने वाले के पीने पीने के बाद उसको वो लड़ाई करना चाहे झगड़ा करना चाहे तो वो शराब उसमें शराब पी कर तो आप यदि ऐसा सोच रहे हो कि कोई आर्टिस्ट दारू पीता है या ये करता है या वो खाता है या सेक्स करता है नो 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 फर्स्टली रिमेम्बर वन थिंग बी इंटेलिजेंट देर इज नथिंग बैड इन दिस वर्ल्ड नथिंग इंक्लूडिंग मर्डर व्हाई 
कृष्ण जो है वो महाभारत में लोगों को क्या अर्जुन को क्या बोल रहा है मारो इनको तो मर्डर ही तो करवा रहा है तो जहां पर मारना है वहां मारना भी पड़ेगा जहां पे काटना है वहां काटना भी एक सर्जन है उसको पेट काटना पड़ता है हाँ पैर काटना पड़ता है एक, एक बॉडी को बचाने के लिए कभी कभी एक पैर भी काटना पड़ता है तो दुनिया में कोई चीज खराब और अच्छी नहीं है जब तक आप ये सोच रहे हो ना वॉट इज गुड एंड वॉट इज बैड आप इंटेलिजेंट ही नहीं हो इंटेलिज जो नॉन इंटेलिजेंट इंसान होगा वो सवाल पूछेगा सर वॉट इज गुड वॉट इज बैड सी देर इज नथिंग गुड एंड नथिंग बैड इट इज हाउ यू यूज दैट थिंग एंड दैट इट इज डिपेंड्स ऑन द इंटेलिजेंस ऑफ द मैन यदि मुझे आप वो दे दो जहर दे दो हाँ तो मैं जहर का एक गलत यूज करना है तो किसी को खिलाकर वो आदमी को मार सकता हूँ और मैं उसकी वैक्सीन भी बना सकता हूँ ठीक है ना जहर बहुत काम है जहर से हजारों वैक्सीन बनते हैं ठीक है तो जब जहर भी खराब नहीं है तो अमृत से लेकर जहर तक कोई चीज खराब नहीं है सब अपनी अपनी अलग अलग क्वालिटी रखती है और उनको आपको यूज करना जानना चाहिए है ना तो इंटेलिजेंस वो इंटेलिजेंस आपका जो है वो दिखाता है कि किस चीज को कितना यूज करना है कितना नहीं यूज करना है और आपने क्या पूछा था आर्टिस्ट के बारे में सो कमिंग बैक टू आर्ट आर्ट इज और एनी अदर एनी जॉब इवन इफ यू आर अ टीचर इट्स अ ट्वेंटी फोर सेवन जॉब और हम लोग क्या करते हैं नॉर्मल आदमी प्राइवेट लाइफ और प्रोफेशनल लाइफ अलग अलग करते हैं बांट देते हैं वी हैव डिवाइडेड वी देर इज अ डिविजन यदि तुम कोई एक्टर से पूछो मिस्टर अमीर खान से पूछो या मालूम ब्रांडो से पूछो तो दिल से ओ यू आस्किंग मी प्राइवेट क्वेश्चन आई एम टेलिंग यू आई हैव नो प्राइवेट लाइफ आई हैव ओनली लाइफ देर इज नो प्राइवेट लाइफ ओके दैट प्राइवेट लाइफ इज अ डिविजन दैट डिविजन मीन्स कॉन्फ्लिक्ट ओके सो दैट मीन्स you are there is one form of life which you are hiding from others and the, why why is why don't you live a life which is whole you know maybe you might not be wanting to answer some questions about your wife or your children that's a different thing but why try divide make this private life you know make this uh, the you know professional life and this kind of division this division creates, creates a conflict number one now if there is a conflict okay you will waste energy and this conflict will make your art b class second class right but if you have no conflict that means whatever you are doing from morning to night okay it is all connected to the work that you are going to do so in other words your life your living living matlab it the food you eat exercise you do the way you uh, treat people the way you uh, you know your relationships with people everything that and the work you do your acting right or your painting it's all interrelated and flowing into each other okay then whatever your life is you can reflect it on in the canvas as an artist okay and then people will see they will say wow is this guy acting is this guy painting or is this real life you see so therefore art meditation divinity wholeness it's all one in other words all arts flow from the divine thank you <laughs> so that's for that's today enough. and then we'll you know have the next session yeah. very soon enough. thanks thank you so much